Would you like to grow garlic like this? I bet you would, wouldn't you? That's why you're here, right? Follow one or two straightforward rules and you will be in business. I'm David, you're watching Grow Mad. Garlic surely has to be one of the most used ingredients in any kitchen and the good news is it's an easy subject to grow even for a beginner if you don't have an allotment simply grow in a container the bad news is not all garlic are created equal there are hard necks, soft necks, purples, white turbans, purple striped, artichoke porcelains, Asiatics and Creoles. It goes on and on and each group has its own special needs and requirements. Oh, and to that list you can also add Rokenbob, Silver Skin, Middle Eastern, Subtropical, Glazed Purple Stripe, Marbled Purple Stripe. There are at least 12 different individual categories types of garlic and then of course as well as the types there are the species soft neck or hard neck so hard necks soft necks what's that all about with the hard neck guess what it's got a hard neck and is better suited to growing in colder climates and some say as a superior flavour. The hardneck produces a flowering stem known as a scape during springtime. This should be removed to increase the size of the bulb but is perfectly edible. Fry in butter or cook as you would for asparagus. Softnecks do not produce a scape. The softneck, yep, you guessed it got a soft neck. It's better suited to growing in warmer climates and I personally think the flavour is okay. It certainly keeps well. So as well as the types and the species there are four main areas which need consideration if you were to be successful with garlic. The first one is the individual varieties the second are the planting dates, the third is the harvest dates, and the fourth, probably the most important, is the storage or the level of dormancy. So let's start with the last first. I know what you're thinking, but dormancy is so important. Two garlic, almost identical. One is a very, very low dormancy the other is a very very high dormancy both of them were lifted within weeks of each other but this one will deteriorate after just a few weeks there's nothing left it's almost gone to zero completely dehydrated should have been used in the kitchen or planted the high dormancy still rock hard it's going to keep for eight, nine, ten months. In some cases, if it's stored perfectly, it will keep for a year. This can be planted much, much later. Let's take a closer look at dormancy. Knowing the dormancy levels of your garlic is absolutely essential. It will determine planting dates, harvesting dates, and storage levels. So we've already seen that the low dormancy garlic don't keep. So you might be thinking to yourself, David, why on earth would I want to grow that rubbishy old garlic for? They don't keep, but the big advantage is they're early to harvest, sometimes as early as April. 
The medium dormancy garlic will be the mainstay of most people's garlic production. It includes varieties such as Kingsland White, Provence White and Rose de Lautrec. You can clearly see that this bulb is now coming out of dormancy, with the growth clearly visible. It's time to wake up, and in this example, you can clearly see root development. It's a fairly manky sample, but it just shows that when they're ready to wake up, they wait for nobody. The high dormancy garlic are the best keeping of all garlics. Many of the varieties such as Solent White, Mersley White, originate from the Auvergne region of France. Absolutely rock solid, will keep for virtually a year. Now make sure that you stick around until the very end of this video because I'm going to share with you the very, very best individual garlic varieties for short dormancy, short storage, but are early to harvest and a list of varieties which are very, very high dormancy and will keep for months and months, even up to a year. And as a bonus, I'm going to give you all of our recommended suppliers, exact addresses from where these varieties can be obtained from. Hang around till the end, you won't be disappointed. So hopefully by now you should have a slightly better understanding of why the dormancy levels are so important. So let's look at planting dates. Planting dates are directly linked to the dormancy. Consider it like a potato tuber. You have earlies, you have mids and you have lates. It's the same with garlic. At this point, talking about cloves and garlic in general and planting in particular, one thing you should not be thinking about planting too early. Unlike many crops that need a bit of warmth to get them going, garlic is just the opposite. It looks for the cold. In fact, the colder the better. So don't be tempted to start planting at the end of August. It's going to be too warm. Don't even plant the beginning of September. Leave it till the end of September for the earliest, but leave it much, much later. Do not be tempted to plant everything early, particularly the lates. They won't do anything. They'll just sit in the ground and the cloves will merely rot. Stick to the correct times of the year. It's worth just thinking about. I know we all want to get going. Don't be tempted to go too early. Just show some patience, it will be worth it in the end. So the earliest of garlic varieties, or the low dormancies, want planting late September. The medium dormancies, or the mids, want planting from October through till December. And the lates, or the very highest dormancy, ideally want to be planted December, January through till February. Don't leave it any later you will be disappointed. So in an ideal world, try and stick to the planting dates. Plant the earlies early, plant the lates late. And don't forget, we're going to give you a comprehensive list of which varieties are which at the end. But if you plant earlies late, you'll end up with little mincy faggable garlic like this. Whereas if you do it properly, you're going to end up with garlic like this. Try and stick to the plan. So now let's look at harvest dates, because this will give you some sort of idea what varieties you are looking for, depending on your required storage. The low dormancy or earlies will harvest from late May. The medium dormancy or mids will harvest from late June. And the high dormancy or main crop, the lates, they will harvest from July onwards. Would you like to hear an interesting fact about garlic? I bet you would, wouldn't you? Well, at the moment we always seem to be surrounded by people going on strike. But did you know that the first reported case of industrial action ever was reported in ancient Egypt on the 14th of November, 1152, 
BC. The slaves building the pyramids decided to go on strike. One because the wages were rubbish, but more importantly because management cut their garlic supply. Can you believe it? In ancient Egypt, apparently garlic was like having a red bull. It gave them wings. And these slaves were like, Pharaoh, do one. We're not, we're not doing it anymore. No garlic, build your own pyramids, Ramesses. It's absolutely straight up. Unbelievable. Anyway, I take it that Ramesses reinstated the garlic rations because let's face it, the pyramids did get built. Okay, so we've dealt with the nitty gritty basics. So why don't we get into some of that lovely juicy stuff, the planting and cultivation. I know this is what you've been waiting for. Let's start by preparing the individual clove. I'm sure it's obvious to all growers that when you receive your garlic bulb, you're not planting the entire bulb. Instead, divide it into the individual cloves. Peel off the outer skin and then start by removing cloves one at a time. Take your time and ensure that nothing has been damaged. The number of individual cloves within a bulb will differ between varieties. You can expect anywhere between 8 and even up to 20. Although bulbs with higher counts will contain an element of smaller ones. Some varieties are easier to peel apart than others. This Rose de Lautrec is clearly coming out of dormancy and is straightforward. Others will be more difficult. No two cloves will ever be the same size. And for the best results, only plant the larger sizes. Keep the smaller ones for the kitchen. Smaller ones can be planted, but are less viable. Also, before you start planting, ensure all cloves are disease free. If in doubt, throw it out. And to assist with disease suppression, Never ever plant garlic on the same ground or plot for more than a single year. Practice crop rotation. Oh, and before we get into planting, why don't you let me know the name of your favorite variety? I love to know what other people are growing. Leave the name in the comments below. I respond to everything. I would love to know and your location. It's always intriguing. Start by raking the site level. Remove any trash and stones, but disturb the soil as little as possible. Next, put a line in. There's nothing worse than rows that aren't straight. Ensure it's not snagged. It's always a good idea just to mock the site up before you start planting to ensure that you're happy with the spacings. Aim to leave at least 6 to 8 inches between individual cloves. Leave about 1 foot between rows. Before you start planting, ensure the clove is the correct way up. Growing point at the top, basal plate at the bottom. This is where the roots will develop from. For planting, you can either use a trowel, I prefer a dibber. Take the clove and insert to about two inches. Oh, and when you finish planting, don't forget to label. We use these color coded labels that won't fade in the sun. There's nothing worse than losing the name of the variety, especially if it's a favorite.
As an alternative to directly planting cloves, you may wish to start them off in pots. 9cm pot with multi-purpose compost is sufficient. This may be due to severe weather, may be too wet, or frozen soil. Plant out when they're ready. Depending on variety and time of year, your garlic will take between two and six weeks to emerge. Would you like to hear another interesting fact about garlic? Well, did you know that the plural of garlic is garlic? But it can also be garlics particularly if you're talking about a collection of garlic or garlics. One garlic, two garlic, or one garlic, two garlics. At Grow Mad we make a lot of compost, about a hundred tonnes a year. It's a combination of horse manure, leaf mould, digestate from a local AD plant, anything that we can collect from the plot, everything gets composted. We waste nothing. If you can, apply a mulch around the growing garlic crop. This will feed the soil, help suppress weeds and help to retain moisture. We like to practice organic gardening wherever we possibly can. And these beds are well amended with compost far far ahead of planting. We don't like using synthetic chemicals of any type. So it's springtime and we're off and running. So if you have followed the guidelines so far growth will be explosive although like everything in growing it's all weather dependent At this time of year things are moving quickly keep the beds weed free irrigate on a regular basis and if you feel the need then you'll have to feed but if you put plenty of compost on they should be taking care of themselves. As discussed earlier, in late spring the hardnecks will produce a stem which would eventually flower, although the flowers are very very insignificant. But as also discussed, they're perfectly edible. But make sure you remove them, it will increase the size of the bulbs. These flowering stems, known as scapes, are not produced on the soft necks. However, very occasionally if a soft neck is under stress, either heat or drought, they may occasionally put the stems up. So, after eight or nine months at last, the big event has arrived. Harvest time. The very earliest varieties can be lifted during May. In some cases, if the weather has been good for us, you can even start at the end of April. These early liftings of garlic are known as lifting in the green. These green garlic are not fully developed, but they have an absolutely perfect flavour. But they won't keep, they need using fresh. If you look at this sample, once it's cut open you can clearly see there's very very little clove development. Most garlic can simply be lifted by pulling from the soil. If the soil is a bit tight you may need to loosely fork. Mid-season can be harvested from July and the late from late July just into August onwards. Once you have lifted your garlic, allow to dry in the sun for two to three days, but no longer, and not in scorching sun, as it can wreck the bulbs. 
after the initial drying in the sun, clean and prepare for curing. The process of curing will prepare your garlic for dormancy. At this stage you can see that the garlic cloves are formed inside but they are not ready for the resting period or the dormancy. Garlic can be used now but if you want to keep them for months even up to a year for the lates you will need to now hang them in the shade with a slight draft above all somewhere dry and keep the temperature ambient. Once your bulbs are fully into dormancy, keep temperatures above 15 degrees. Any colder and growth will be reinitiated. So, as promised earlier on in the video, we are going to now share with you some of our favourite varieties. We grow a lot of garlic at Grow Mad, and we definitely have some that we favour more than others. Also, we shall be sharing our favoured and highly recommended suppliers. So, starting with low dormancy garlic, the first earlies and second earlies. Not the longest of keeping garlic, but they do have the big, big advantage of being early to harvest, just when you're looking for the new crop. So first up we have Primor, a purple striped hardneck originating from the Middle East and available from one of our favourite organic suppliers Tamar down in Devon. Our second recommendation is a variety called Sprint, also a purple striped hardneck, more difficult to find but we do have stocks available at Grow Mad. Contact us through the website should you require some. Our third recommendation is a white garlic, Ulzito. Yes, it's a bit of a bizarre name, but it's a white turban hardneck. Again, supplies are difficult to come by, but we do have some really good stocks at Grow Mad contact us if you would like to try some. Also recommended in the white turban hardnecks is Extra Early White from our good friends over at the Garlic Farm on the Isle of Wight. Next up are the second earlies. This is a particular group of purple garlic from the Cadors region in France, or the Violette de Cadors. The Isle of Wight, our good friends, the Garlic Farm, have stocks of Rhapsody White, and the number one variety elsewhere is probably Germidor. And Germidor can be purchased from Sutton's, Thompson and Morgan, and all good garden centres that supply Taylor's bulbs. Next comes the mid-seasons, the medium dormancy storage garlic. This group contains, to be honest, most of the varieties. However, we do have some favourites and they are as follows. In no particular order, because they are all excellent garlics. Carcassonne, a red cloved hardneck creole type, originating from northern Spain. Provence White, an artichoke softneck with purple stripes originating from southern France. Maddock White, an Iberian softneck, again with purple stripes. Cork White, a beautiful hardneck from Eastern Europe. And last but definitely not least is the Rose de la Trek, known in this country as Kingsland White or Eden Rose and one or two others as well. 
originates from the Lautrec region of France. One of the very, very best garlic in the world. Beautiful pink cloves. And our favoured suppliers, the garlic farm on the Isle of Wight, King Seeds, Mr. Fothergill Seeds, and DT Brown Seeds. All great suppliers. So, to the late season garlic, the high dormancy can keep for 8, 10 months, almost a year in some cases, if well looks after. These garlic are the last to plant, the last to harvest, and the last to use in the kitchen. The range of varieties is limited, but we have three that never let us down. Here they are. All of the late season high dormancy garlic, the best ones, come from the Drôme in the Avania region of France. They include Solent White, Mersley White and Claydor. They are by far the best three late good keeping garlic that exist. Well at least for growing on the allotment in the UK. For the Solent White and the Mersley White the best offering is the garlic farm on the Isle of Wight and for clay door it can be obtained from Sutton Seeds or if you're looking for an organic option you can find it over at Tamar Organics in Devon. Well that completes our list of personal recommendations. I hope it was useful. I would just like to add at this point that varieties do come and go, suppliers change offerings. I can't guarantee that everything is always available from every supplier. But bear in mind there is virtually zero garlic breeding. So the varieties we've got are pretty well going to be there for the foreseeable future. How was my French pronunciation? Was that okay? I don't want to sound like that bloke off of Hello Hello. You know the one I mean? A podging has just crept on my hod. I'm hoping I've given you a pretty good grounding in the basics um, of garlic growing and producing and storage. But if you would like to take your garlic production growing to another level I've got some resources here which I think would be more than useful. There's this first book by Ron England. He's an American living North America on the Canadian border. It's a great book. It really is. It's full of technical information on growing, the history, production, storing. It's full. Pages and pages of it. It's well worth buying. Second resource is this excellent book by Natasha Edwards and for those of you that don't know who Natasha is she is the daughter of Colin Boswell the founder of the garlic farm on the Isle of Wight again a great resource packed with information nice thing about this book is it's got a ton of recipes in all garlic orientated brilliant book Third nice little book, again, it's from the Garlic Farm, Isle of Wight, pocket size growing guide. It's great, it's full of tips. Put it in your pocket next time you go to the allotment. All three of these resources are definitely worth investing in and they can all be purchased through our book club on our website, growmad.co.uk or you can just buy it from your normal bookseller. Well worth the investment. Definitely, you should look at all three. So there you have it. The Grow Mad Essential Guide to Growing Garlic. I hope you've gained some guidance, some value from this video. If you have, please like, please comment, please subscribe to the channel. We'd so appreciate it, we really would. Subscribe to our social media channels. They're down there somewhere. And we have a fantastic website, that's 
up there somewhere. We'd love to see you on the other side. Thanks again from all the team at Gromad. We'll see you on the soil.